If you visited our channel before, you already know what to expect from us. The very best archaeological finds from around the world. If, on the other hand, you've never visited our channel before, today would be a good day to get to know us better. You can do that by clicking subscribe, and you've got just enough time to do it before we get into the incredible discoveries in this video. Let's kick things off with the Siloam Inscription, which is also sometimes known as the Shiloa Inscription or the Silwan Inscription. It's an inscription written in Hebrew, and it was discovered within the Siloam Tunnel in the city of David in 1838. Before the inscription was discovered, it was impossible for archaeologists to know how old the tunnel was because obtaining accurate dates for rock monuments is beyond modern science. However, the inscription handily records the construction of the tunnel, so we can date it to the 8th century BCE. Aside from being useful for that purpose, the inscription is also unique. This is the only known inscription commemorating a public construction work of its era in Israel or Judah. Such inscriptions were common features of Mesopotamian or Egyptian construction projects, but not here. That makes it possible that the workers who built the tunnel had links to one of those places, but we'll never have any way of proving that. Aside from dating the tunnel, the inscription also reveals the method used for its construction, with stone cutters coming from either end to meet in the middle. Mundishwari Temple in India's Kaimur district has been considered a protected monument by the Archaeological Survey of India since 1915. The organization has an excellent reason for affording the temple such high status. It's the oldest Hindu temple in the entire country. The experts who work for the Archaeological Survey of India have been able to obtain a precise year for the construction of the temple using a variety of tests. They're certain that it was built in the year 108. Their assessment runs contrary to the tourist information plaque outside the temple, which dates it to the year 625, based on the oldest inscriptions within its walls. The temple was originally dedicated to the worship of Devi Durga, one of the principal aspects of the Supreme Mother Goddess. There was once a much larger religious and educational center at the site of the temple, with the temple itself serving as the main shrine, but all of the other buildings and monuments have long since been destroyed or removed. Even this temple has been damaged in the past, with a broken idol of Mandalashwari on display within the main temple's eastern chamber. Pompeii is the largest archaeological site in the world. Work has been ongoing in Pompeii since the 18th century and might not finish in our lifetime. Among the many fascinating discoveries made, there is a monumental tomb with the world's longest funerary inscription. It was found close to Porta Stabia in mid-2017. Experts think that the tombstone was erected not long before the eruption of Mount Vesuvius in the year 79, which destroyed the city. The inscription on its surface is more than 10 feet long and describes the life of the person it's dedicated to. The name of the deceased is a curious omission from the text, but it mentions his grand wedding, the public banquets he held, and his prowess in gladiatorial games, including the defeat of large beasts. As well as all the biographical details, the inscription references a large-scale brawl that broke out during a gladiator show in an amphitheater in the year 59 BCE, which was considered such a scandal that Emperor Nero ordered the Roman Senate to investigate its circumstances. The investigation resulted in the expulsion of several magistrates, and it would be 10 years before Pompeii was permitted to host gladiator shows again. Construction work close to the ancient city of Mira in Antalya, Turkey, was brought to a sudden halt in June 2017, when bulldozer driver Nuri Bilcik realized he'd collided with a historical artifact. Experts were called to the scene and very quickly became excited when they realized that Nuri had accidentally discovered a Lycian-era rock tomb. Specialists from the Museum of Lycian Civilizations believe the monument to be 2,400 years old. Unfortunately, it seems neither Nuri nor the experts were the first people to find the tomb. It's empty and was most likely robbed hundreds of years ago. The unusual shape of the tomb has captivated historians, who wonder why the upper part of it is shaped like a boat, but the lower half is shaped like a house. 
Creating the tomb would have been a difficult job for the people of the era, as it's been carved directly into bedrock. It's more than 12 feet below the ground today, which is likely a result of the tomb being swallowed by silt when the nearby Miros River burst its banks and flooded the area during the 6th century. England's William Shakespeare is regarded as the greatest writer who ever lived and is known throughout the world, but far fewer people are likely to have heard of Tang Tianzu. He's a well-known figure in his native China, though, where he's considered to be the Chinese equivalent of Shakespeare. His most famous work is called The Peony Pavilion. We're talking about Tang Tianzu because archaeologists finally discovered the great wordsmith's grave in August 2017. It's one of 42 Ming-era graves that were found in Qiangxi province that month, all of which date between 1368 and 1644. Tang passed away close to the end of the era in 1616. Aside from being buried in the plot, Tang also appears to have written epitaphs for some of the people he's buried with. Experts have identified no fewer than six of the epitaphs at the site to be Tang's work. One of them is for his second wife, Xiao, and another is for Fu, his third wife. It's thought that the gravesite was deliberately destroyed and then covered up during the Chinese Cultural Revolution of the 1960s, but it was found again after the demolition of a factory that once stood on this ground. In 2016, a mummified female body was found at an archaeological site close to the coastal ruined town of Asparo in Peru. She was named the Lady with the Four Brooches because of the jewelry she was found buried with. One year later, artists released an incredible recreation of what the Lady with the Four Brooches would have looked like when she was alive 4,500 years ago. The mummy is significant not only because of its age, but because of the culture she belonged to. She was a member of the Karal civilization which is noted by historians for being an unusual ancient example of a gender-equal society in South America. Within that society, this woman almost certainly held a rank of nobility. She wouldn't have been buried in this fashion if she wasn't considered to have great importance, and her four brooches are also a clue to her social status. They would have been used as clothes fasteners, and ornamental fasteners of this kind were often used as symbols of affluence. We think we know what she looked like, what she wore, and what position she held. The only thing missing is her name, but sadly, we'll probably never know that. Some historians like to claim that the people of the Americas were uncivilized before European settlers arrived, but that simply isn't true. We find more evidence of that fact all the time, and we can see it here in this exceptionally rare Aztec map. The map was drawn in Mexico during the 16th century at a crucial point in relations between the Aztecs and the colonial Spanish. It's known as the Codex Quetzalcoatlan and covers an area of land between Puebla and Mexico City, land that apparently belonged to the de Leon family. It's one of fewer than 100 maps from this era that have survived to the present day. What makes the map especially interesting is the blending of Aztec and Spanish cultures. It's made using native dyes like Maya Blue and features Aztec hieroglyphs, but it also features a few place names listed in Spanish and Spanish buildings. Experts believe the map was made somewhere around the year 1570, long after Hernan Cortes invaded Mexico and conquered the Aztec Empire, but proves that elements of Aztec culture civilization lived on beyond that, seemingly at peace with their Spanish neighbors. At first, archaeologists weren't too surprised when they found the wrecks of two ships in the Baltic Sea close to Stockholm in Sweden. The cold sea is so saline that shipworms can't survive in it, so wrecks tend to survive for a long time. There are more than 100 shipwrecks in this part of the sea, but what eventually caught the attention of archaeologists about this pair of February 2018 discoveries is their age. One of the vessels is a medieval cog and probably sank during the 14th century. The second is thought to be from the 16th century. Medieval ships are rare discoveries in Swedish waters because the Swedish naval fleet didn't reach its pomp until the 17th century. 
the 14th century ship is, understandably, in relatively poor condition, missing its square-rigged mask. The younger vessel sits upright on the seabed, with its mast standing straight and most of its essential equipment still on board. Divers have noted barrels of Osmond iron, kitchen tools, and personal belongings inside the wreck. Identifying the ship is, unfortunately, likely to be impossible because of the poor record-keeping of the era. During the chaos of the English Reformation, King Henry VIII made the strange decision to commission a tapestry of St. Paul, directing a book burning in front of an enormous bonfire to hang on the walls of Hampton Court. It's a curiously unique piece ordered by a curiously unique king, and for a long time it was thought to be lost. In September 2018, the lost tapestry was rediscovered. The beautiful 20-foot wide piece, completed during the 1530s, was designed by Peter Kirke van Elst and then woven with threads of gold and silver at enormous expense. The country might have been falling to pieces, but Henry wanted his tapestry and he didn't care what it cost him. An inventory of Hampton Court performed when the king died in 1547 says it was still there at the time, after which it's known to have been in Windsor Castle until 1770. After that, it disappears from British records. But it's now understood that it found its way to Barcelona, Spain during the 1960s. It's possible that it had been bought and sold on the black market several times by then. After being identified, it was finally brought back home to London. When you're considering visiting a city on vacation, you do a little research first. Part of that is because you want to know where to go when you're there, but it's just as important to know where not to go. If you were thinking of visiting London, England during the early 14th century, it would be useful to have sight of this so-called medieval murder map. It takes data recorded by coroners between the years 1300 and 1340 and overlays incidences of violent deaths onto the city's streets, thus allowing visitors to see where the danger hotspots are. Aside from showing just how dangerous some of London's streets were during those years, it also comes with a key explaining the circumstances of each death. Some of them are truly bizarre. One man was murdered by a violent mob, who were infuriated with him littering the street with eel skins from his market stall. Statistically speaking, the most dangerous place to visit is a stretch of road in Cheapside between St. Mary Le Bow Church and St. Paul's Cathedral. We're sure the city's tourist board would like us to point out that it's a much safer area today. Our next discovery comes from June 2022, and it's a big one. In fact, it's a whole forgotten city. The 3,400-year-old city has recently emerged from the Tigris River, having been submerged during the construction of Iraq's Mosul Reservoir during the 1980s. Somehow, the existence of the city was either unidentified or ignored when the reservoir was made. Archaeologists say that the city was built during the height of the old Mitanni Empire. It wasn't any old city either. It was a place of great importance. We know that because it has several large administrative buildings and a grand palace. Some historians think it might even be the ancient and fabled city of Zakiku, which is known to have been one of the most important cities in the entire empire between the years 1550 and 1350 BCE. The city will only remain accessible for as long as the current drought lasts, which means the experts at the scene have to work fast. So far, they've mapped all of the city's largest areas and identified a fortified wall punctuated with towers, vast storage facilities, and what might be an industrial complex. They've also found five ceramic vessels containing more than 100 cuneiform tablets, but translating the text is likely to take several months. When archaeologists in Germany excavated the grave of a Roman soldier in February 2020, they were confused when they dug up a solid object that looked a little like a chicken tender. Alternatively, for our British viewers, you could say it looked a little like a battered fish. It took a restoration expert a long time to dispense with the rust, but the result achieved by the restoration project is extraordinary. It's now plain to see that this is a beautiful ancient Roman dagger, 
inlaid with jewels and elaborately decorated. It was still in its sheath when it was found, although it was impossible to see that at first because of all the rust. Experts say the silver artifact is about 2,000 years old. The discovery was made at Haltern am See, not far from the remains of a former Roman military camp that was attacked several times by Germanic tribes. It's likely that the soldier was a victim of one of those raids. A weapon of such beauty wouldn't have been in the hands of a low-ranking soldier, so it's likely that he was a centurion. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you soon.